Welcome everybody to the THP Strength Podcast. Today we are going to be answering the question, do Olympic lifts help you to jump higher? But before we do that, first I want to thank our sponsors, our kind and gracious sponsors, uh, THP Strength Online Coaching. If you want to jump higher, they have a guarantee where you can gain at least three inches of vertical in six months. And if not, they'll train you for free until you do. And for a limited time only, it's only $99 a month as opposed to $700 a month. The price will be going up once they reach capacity. So take advantage of that while you still can. And yeah, I'll give you guys a discount too. If you want 10% off your first month, use the code THP at checkout. Uh, Having said that, let's answer the question. John, do Olympic lifts help you to jump higher? Sorry, guys. We're trying to dial in the audio here so it sounds beautifully crisp for you boys. Um, also, we're in a car because it's raining and we didn't feel like doing the podcast indoors. Yeah. So that's why. That's why we're, that's we're in, in a car, car today. Um, so the question, do they do they help? You want my, my lens on this? Is that like what, what my opinion is? Yeah. I, or should we, should we give our experiences first? There's so many ways we could approach this. I guess... Yeah, actually, yeah, let's do that. I like that. All right, so have has Olympic lifting helped me in my vertical increase, okay? And have I seen it increase with other athletes? Me, personally, yes. I absolutely think it has. Without them, I don't think I would be near the one-foot jumper that I am. And as a two-foot jumper, I very, very concretely think that they have helped a lot. Um, when I have jumped the highest, um, and then also some of the athletes that I've coached, when they've jumped the highest is when their power cleans have gone up right and it's not like oh i just learned the lift and they see a big jump it's like as their power clean goes up they jump higher both off vert and approach vertical um they are very strongly correlated in my opinion uh i I think that if you're doing regular two foot jumping then even one foot jumping i see i see it probably correlate better hang power clean correlates better with one foot jumping i think especially high jump than maybe other any other metric I've seen personally for me. Maybe just getting really, really strong. High jump's a little bit different, but power clean for sure. And then uh, in terms of coaching athletes, again, I, I see that all the time. So I've seen it with you, I've seen it with Austin. Uh, the potential to jump high is much higher as their power clean goes up. We're only talking about power clean, I'm not even gonna get into snatch or any of the other lifts right now, but whether you're good at them or not, it doesn't matter. What I see is that as you get better at them, people jump, jump higher. Yeah. That's what I've seen. Yeah, that, I mean, that has been my experience with it. Um, I actually have a pretty big background with Olympic lifting. The reason being is my stepdad, he was an Olympic weightlifter when he was in college. He was actually a elite level Olympic weightlifter. He won athlete of the year um, for Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. I, I think like 2003 for all, all college sports. Um, and growing up, I would always watch VHS tapes of him lifting. He taught me lifting technique with a broomstick uh, when I was really little. And I was always fascinated by the sport. And when I was around 14, 15 years old, that's when I started doing Olympic weightlifting and looking up YouTube videos about it. Looked up a lot to guys like uh, Clarence Kennedy, the Chinese, everybody in the Chinese Olympic weightlifting team. Um, so that was my inspiration for doing the Olympic list, specifically power cleaning. Um, and then when I, when I started playing high school basketball, uh, the coaches would make us do power cleans. And that was at both the schools that I, that I went to in high school. Um, so it was always something that I did and I would specifically, I would squat a lot and I would power clean a lot. And as I started improving a lot and jumping every single day, um, this is very distracting, by the way. I'm sorry, dude. I'm trying to tighten this. It keeps falling, and you keep falling out of the frame. Oh. <laughs> Otherwise, I wouldn't do it. Yeah. Like it literally, it's like I set it up, and then it just goes and sinks down because the lens is too big. Yeah. And when it rests on this, it gets shaky as shit. Uh-oh. There's a reason, guys. Okay. <laughs> if you're not watching, I'm I'm trying to adjust the camera to get it to set yeah. where it needs to be. But uh, yeah, I started jumping every day and. It's interesting because I I feel like a lot of athletes that had that period of jumping every day just jumped and they didn't really focus on the weight room. Um, I always did both. Like I was jumping a lot and then I was lifting a lot and I was specifically I was power cleaning a lot. And again, as I jumped higher, my power clean has continued to rise and rise and rise. 
and there has been a pretty freaking strong correlation between me hitting a PR power clean and jumping my highest ever. Like I think every time I have PR'd my vertical, I have hit a PR power clean like two to four weeks prior prior to that. Right. Um, so it's a big indicator of my readiness as well. Um, when yeah, I'm, that's maybe another question. Like, let's say you, let's say like you didn't power clean at all. Yeah. Right. Do you think it's that you would just know it's like an assessment for you, like an assessment tool that, for you? So I've been thinking about this because there is an argument to be made. Like maybe like correlation doesn't mean there's causation. Like the power clean might not be the driver. Like were, were there other factors? Is jumping the reason your power clean is going up? Yeah. <laughs> like, like what uh, if who I? Who are we to know? Who are we to say? Yeah. If I had, if I had, like, if all other things the same, if I had taken out power cleans, would I still have? Would I be jumping fifty point five inch vertical? I guess that's the more interesting. Yeah. The more interesting question. Um, I'll give my anecdotal experiences. We've taken with out it. cleans. I feel like before. It's yeah. Really- what about pulls, take out pulls, take out power cleans, take out everything, So Olympic lift derivative? I think if I were to take out pulls completely, I wouldn't have hit 50.5 inch vertical. I don't think my vertical would like that. Uh, pull, be, feeling strong pulling from the ground usually results in me jumping well. What if you only did hex bar jump? That's a good question. That is, a, that is a very good if question. every time I ever programmed Oli's, we just put hex bar jumped in. Yeah. So And I, all we did was look at VBT. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I think there is a possibility I would still jump yeah, I high. I think it could. I think it could potentially work. Yeah. It's just that I think your compliance on that wouldn't necessarily be great. I would get really bored. I think you'd get super bored. With I think training. it would become super monotonous. I think your buy-in would drop. Yep. Uh, so, so I thought about this exact question. Like, I think I was like taking a shower or something and I was like, hmm. that's the best times and taking a shit and taking a shower yeah. is the greatest times to think about training questions. And I was thinking about it. And I think, I think that there's three main benefits to Oli's in my opinion. One is your intent is way freaking higher. Mm-hmm. And with intent, I feel like, oh, actually four. I think the catch is specific. If you're going really heavy and you're catching in a half squat, It is one of the most, we were talking in a different podcast about how there's lifts where I'm just like this trance, this this feels just like a jump. Like just how my two foot. And when I, when I catch a heavy ass clean, when it's like 90 plus percent of my max and I'm catching it right there on the half squat, it feels like when I am running fast as hell and I hit that one, two and I'm at the bottom of my plant. It feels really similar to that. So I think that transfers over really, really well. Um, The intent, I don't think you could hit the same intent in, I guess, like more plyometric, like strength speed, similar like squat jumps, hex bar jumps and that type of thing. I just don't try as hard. Um, I think psychologically, I can't try as hard. Like even on pulls, like it's different. Yesterday was a great example. You missed 285, right? Is that what it was? Yeah. Like you were pulling the hell out of the bar on Mm -hmm on Monday. Yesterday, if you would have had, cause I was fatigued. So my power thing was down like 35 pounds. If you would have had me do like squat jumps, I would not have been trying on like, yeah, yeah, there's uh, no way. but the weight, it's but like, the there's a goal. It's like, you there's have to goal. hit 85%. Mm-hmm. You have to hit 87.5% or 90%. Which I guess if you had VBT though, on a hex bar jump or a squat bar jump where you have to hit a certain velocity. Yeah. I just, that, the question is like, would you get bored? Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely know. would get bored and I, do would you genuinely get enjoy it, Olympic that's a big lifting. Part of it too. It's fun. It's a fun skill. It's badass. Mm-hmm. And it's it's a it's a great equalizer. Like yep. when I look at Oli's and I'm looking at an athlete who wants to train and get better and they they're about it. To me, it's like if you don't want to do Oli's, you're not about it. If you don't want to master the technique, yeah. you're never gonna be. You're never gonna reach your genetic potential. Well, that's that's where my the third the third thing that I was gonna say. Well, the other one, real quick. I think variety. Oh, yeah. Variety is hey, a freaking variety. training law for adaptation, and Olympic lifting is just another tool that you can add variety with. It just expands your a badass one. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. It, it expands your sick. training bag and allows you to keep making progress for a longer period of time. Because they're probably in the future, in the near future, we probably at some point will take Olympic lifts out and mess around with hex bar jumps just for yeah, the stimulus, fair. for the for the novelty of it. 
Um, but yeah, the, the variety. And then lastly, the coordination. If you can learn how to Olympic lift properly, you'll become a better athlete as a result. Is the the guy on the horse. <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> We're literally driving down a like a, a pretty urbanized area. What would you call it? like a, a regular uh, city? It, it, like it, it, like it's like, a downtown road leading from downtown. And there's a to guy UCF. riding a horse on the sidewalk. Trotting, like high stepping. <laughs> Look, bro, it's almost like electric cars, you know, like. <laughs> Soon enough, electric car, if you're in a petrol, it's gonna be like, ah, it's like horseback riding. You just enjoy the sights and sounds and that smells so of horseback. That is so funny. That is so funny. Yeah, that was, that's crazy. Um, anyways, <laughs> yeah, you'll, you'll be a better athlete. You're gonna, you're gonna learn to learn motor skills a lot better. Like, I feel like I've become a better athlete from having to teach myself Olympic lifts, studying it. You learn how to study too. Like when you're obsessed with like, Olympic lifting, you're watching videos and you're taking videos yourself and you make an adjustment. Like, you learn how to learn. And then it teaches you how to time things properly. Here's a, dude, here's another good question. This just came to mind and I had to interrupt. Who, you look at our athletes as a whole, right? Yeah. Think about all the athletes with incredible Olympic lifting technique. Yeah. Good Ole technique, lift big numbers. Generally speaking, when you look at their ability to dunk. I'm just gonna name some names real quick. Isaiah Rivera, you might have ne- heard, you might of have him. heard of him. Yeah, he's good. Jordan Kilgannon, Jonathan Clark. Think of our athletes too. Uh, Dan Gross. Yep. Austin. Austin Burke. Austin. I'm trying to think of some some other guys. I'm trying to think of like elite, but I just I just named guys that are at the top, at the top, t- basically the tippy top of two foot verticals. Yep. Two foot dunkers. They all have sensational. Like if you were to take a hundred uh, athletes, they would be in the top one percent of, of Olympic lifting technique. Right. I would say, yeah, all of them. We lifted with Dan. I've seen Kilgannon Olympic lift. I've seen Jay Clark lift. Kilgannon's got a good power claim. Mm-hmm. Good. I didn't know that. And yeah, they all. <laughs> I mean, for our success honestly, leaves clues. <laughs> success leaves clues. <laughs> I'm thinking about our athletes and like. Off the top of my head, you know, I have a couple guys that come to mind. That guy Lucas that we just started coaching. Yeah. He, amazing Olympic weightlifting technique. Jumps really, really powerful high. Powerful as hell. Yep, powerful as hell. Um, Josh Rubel. Josh Rubel. 250, 255. I, no, maybe 265. Now. I think he just hit 260 or 265. Yeah, he's, he's yeah. Beat, beating my PR. Um, you know, he's dunks the shit out of the ball. We got, uh, as, as Dom's Olympic lifting technique has gotten better and his power clean has gone up, so it's his vertical. Hunter Gastona mm-hmm. got his clean up. His hit just hit 205. Better at Olympic lifting, better at dunking, right? Yeah. Um, the guy I tagged you in yesterday. Shoot, why is he? He East Bay at dunk camp in July. Tre- uh, oh, Trenton Pierce? Trenton Pierce. Repping 275 for doubles. East Bay, yeah. right? Yeah. Really, really good. Our better East Bay athletes, off the dribble at what, 510 or yeah. something? And it's, it's like, the thing is, it's not necessarily like how much weight they do it's almost the way that they do it yep. they have good technique they look proficient they, they look proficient yeah they look proficient and they, they have a and great second pull and high relative strength numbers yeah in the power and high relative strength numbers in the power clean like they generally jump very very high that's that's what i've seen i've seen it with one foot i've seen it with two foot high jumpers like i said dude some of the craziest numbers i've ever seen for relative power comes from high jumpers like mikey hoffer yeah, Duke can power some clean freaky a numbers, bro. shit ton. Even Jordan Westner power cleans like a decent amount. And yeah. his technique's not even proficient. I've seen crazy numbers from jumpers, track guys in the power clean, like freaky, freaky relative strength numbers. Yeah. And it's usually from, uh, you know, the, the elite, elite jumpers. And I think for us, it's like, why would we not use that? I'll tell you what I really haven't seen. Elite jumpers who care about their hex bar jump. Yeah. I've never seen an elite jumper like that was like, I really give a shit about my hex bar jump. Mm-hmm. Like that's proficient with technique, that's proficient with, you know, uh, uh, technique in the weight room and then also in their jump technique. Yeah. Like doesn't really happen. Not so, a really a conversation at all. So having said all that, do you think it is a driver of vertical jump performance or more or more of an assessment? I think it's, I think it's, deeper than that like it's coordination is so complex 
I don't think it's this thing where it's like, oh, you display more power and power clean, you jump higher. Yeah. Like, I don't think it's that. I don't think it's like that. I think it's like to have good Olympic lifting technique, you have to be very obsessed with getting good at the little things. Yeah. And I think that that is the same mindset that you need to have with Yo. jumping. Maybe and something it does improve power. Like we do see research articles where it does improve power. Don't yeah. get me wrong. And your vertical jump does go up and it is a great power exercise. But for what we do, I think it's that your attention to detail and your focus on improving those things, those aspects in training. Yeah. You know, and, and just getting after it and building fatigue using that exercise. Woo wee. That got bright fast. <laughs> You're gonna kill me, but I gotta turn that down. Um I think that's more about why, why they get better, you know? Yep. I also think, so specificity is really important for adaptation. The more similar in exercises to what you're trying to improve, the more transfer it's going to have. And one of the things that's really important, the reason like compound lifts are so much better than like a single joint exercise is because jumping is also complex and a, and a compound movement. And what's really similar or what's really interesting about power cleans is they mimic not just the jump itself, but even it's like the penultimate into the plant into triple yeah. extension is like so the I exact say, same. I haven't even talked about the biomechanics of why I think it's really effective. Like yeah. honestly, I have not even touched on that. And like if you were just to look at the movement patterns of a two foot jump and the movement patterns of a power clean, they are so freaking similar. I mean, it is insane up into the second pole. Yep. Like you want to do the catch, don't do the catch. Including right, the fine. approach. <laughs> like so not saying, just. <laughs> like if you're you're in this you're in a semi bent knee position, i.e. the penultimate step, you extend off of that just like you do off of the penultimate step, and then when you plant your leg, right? So that that's like somewhat similar, right? But that, but then if you're just talking about mid flight to touchdown of the the plant foot and block foot. Like the plant foot is so similar, it's unbelievable. You go from what is essentially a, a bent knee position, right, when you're in flight, then you, you extend the knee, which is the second pull, you mm -hmm. contact the ground, what is at the end of the first, or sorry, uh, the first pull, at the end of the first pull, you contact the ground, your leg is completely straight, right? Your shins, if you were rotating the whole body, your shins would be vertical, just like a power clean. If you took a power clean, right, and you rotated it, it would look like touchdown of the plant foot. Yeah. That like you took the shin angle and you rotated it to where that would be. Mm -hmm. It's gonna look exactly like the plant foot touching down. And then you bend the knee, just like you do in a power clean. <laughs> yeah. So And then you explode out of that position. So there there's just like a power clean. There's two things I, I wanna address. One, I, I wanna talk about how like I guess tips for increasing your power clean, but before we get into that. What would you say about the argument that the ground contact times are way longer in, so, a, in a power clean than a two foot jump or a one foot jump? Look at the second pull. The second pull of a power clean is 130 milliseconds, maybe less. Ho, ho, ho. It's very, 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 very fast. How, how fat, what are ground contact times for one and two foot jumps? Two foot jumping is 300 milliseconds. One foot jumping is about 180. If you looked at from amortization, upwards like the yeah. push-up phase that like like from the double knee bend to pushing up out of that position the time frames are very very similar like you're looking at i mean it depends on the weight you get anywhere from like i think 100 milliseconds to like 160 yeah it depends on how proficient you and are and that's at what point of the power clean that's what like portion? when the knees get to the deepest position of the double knee bend to extension okay you're looking okay. at roughly the same time interval right and i'm not saying like in terms of specificity i always think there should be at least a degree of separation away like otherwise why not just jump with weights on your back why not just go do approach jumps with dumbbells or something you know i think there needs to be a degree of separation away from that thomas Corton that's actually say a, that. a, a topic for another podcast too. yeah but I, every time I do a QA, I get asked, weighted vest. Weighted like, it's like so, vest. such a common what question. What about weighted vest? I don't know. I don't really think it's, yeah, that's another conversation. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, I, I think that time interval is very similar. Now, the joint angles, in terms of specificity, you're at some point, you're going to be in a quarter squat of the jump as you're coming up, right? Now, yeah. maybe 
you don't have as much double knee bend, but it's quite a bit for, for guys, you know, and they're up on the ball of their foot. It's a very, you're in your strongest position. You're, you're in a yeah. good leverage position, your strongest position, your most powerful position. Uh, you know, a jump, you might get into more flexion or whatever else, but in terms of the velocities, like it's pretty high. And then that double knee bend, like it happens really fast. Mm -hmm. You know, you go from being in the second, the end of the first pole where your hips are back, you're like a silver back gorilla position to the bottom of the double knee, like pretty quick. And then you get out of that position pretty quick. Even if it's 450 milliseconds, that's pretty fucking close. Yeah. You're moving 300 pounds, you know, in your case or something like that. Or, uh, you know, I, I'm actually, I'm gonna pull my phone out because I am curious on, we wanna know how long it takes to get in and out of, I don't even, oh, my, here's my phone. We wanna know how long it takes to get in and out of the bottom of the double knee bend? Yeah. Is that what we're looking at? Yeah. I'm not, I don't, we don't have to wonder. We can look this up. <laughs> Are we gonna look at one of yours or one of mine? Let's look at one of mine. One of yours? Yeah. Oh, I might only have like 20. You need a power clean? Second. A power clean? I clean probably clean? have one of, I mean, I have one of yours. I don't know like, like what frame rate it'll be. Like this is one right here. This is probably 24 frames per second. That's okay. Let's get a little ballpark yeah, right. number. <laughs> All right. The app we're using, by the way, is My Jump 2. If you, if you it's want a to red, a blue, it, and a green. What this is, is not a sponsor. They don't pay us. <laughs> yeah, they are. They are not. We should, probably should time. set up an affiliate thing with them, but uh, it's how we measure flight times, ground contact times, RSI. All right, so I'll just go from the bottom of the second pool to extension. Yeah. Mm, here, here, here. Well, let's just look at the knee. Let's just go to the knees full extension. Yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah. right there. Take off the catch. Doesn't matter. Okay, so you you take 150 milliseconds with 300 pounds to get from the out of amortization to the top to Damn. get to terminal knee extension, 130 to 160. Because yeah. I I went on the the slower end yeah. for it. That's fast. That's really fast for knee extension exercises. All right, so that's one. All right, then we want to look at what it. Takes you know what's crazy? From double knee bends. Wait, wait, wait. You know what's crazy? What's that? So that's from. That's the entire portion of the second pool concentrically. Until the catch? Dude, just from the, from the, your knees being extended, they dip under, swing under. So from that position to extension is 130. And I haven't brought the bar up, right? It's just not to the catch? No, 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 no. So it's, let's see how I can explain this. I'd have to see it visually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna try to show you where this As I'm, as I'm driving. Is. Yeah, this is. <laughs> so it's, it's from, from, oh, this is where Austin <laughs> bangs his face. From here to here is 130. You know what's crazy? Milliseconds. Ground contact time for me is 0.26. That's exactly half. Yeah, there you go. Well, let's, that's see, like, let's see from the double knee bend. I'd be curious yeah. from the double knee bend. Like, that's what exactly, it we're is. looking at essentially half, like ground contact time of my plant leg to toe off. My touchdown of the plant leg on a two foot jump to toe off of the two foot jump for me is 0.26. He's looking at what essentially is half that movement, and it was 13, 130 yeah, Between 130 to 160 milliseconds. Which is like so now, extremely specific. <laughs> all right, so let's go from the start, the end of the first pull. Yeah. To triple extension. Yeah. We'll say there. So that's contact, it's 333. That's close. That's at that's your top, top weights, bro. That's very and that's close. that's favoring, so you're probably at 300 to 330 milliseconds. Yeah. To get through the, the double knee bend and triple extension. That's very specific. That's very specific. Slightly lower weights than max. Like if I'm probably at yeah, 90% weights, like, yeah, it's 90 percent, probably right at just trying to move it a little high faster. specificity. High, I mean, high specificity. To, we should look at that. That'd be a good idea. We try to figure out at what weight do you, yeah. do you hit the same. I bet you there would be a correlation between how easy I do those weights I bet you it's like 225, how 225 feels. Yeah, <laughs> and how like high that. I jump. I wonder if I could have a 225 so, lift. That's crazy. There's there's that argument about ground contact times. <laughs> yeah, and then if you're gonna look at just like the forces and stuff, we overload clean pulls, which helps the first pull, and then, you know, like that helps you power clean more weight, yeah. and then you're moving, you create a reserve where you can move the lighter weights faster, and then your power output goes up at those even more specific angles. Yep. So it's like, there you go. There's a lesson in specificity for you. Cause yeah. you know what you don't, unless you're doing a counter movement hex bar jumps, you're not gonna get the same 
velocity. I don't even know with a counter move and hex bar jump if you could even get close yeah. to the same. I, I bet you the eccentric forces on that would be a lot higher. Well, obviously, you have eccentric forces. Mm -hmm. You don't have eccentric forces in the double knee bend. Yeah. You're dealing with eccentric forces in a in a clean, but it's with your leg completely straight. Yeah. You know? Like, it's like you're breaking from support until in a straight leg position, like you're you're breaking so much of the force at that point mm -hmm. for the first, you know, 30 milliseconds of ground contact. At that point, it's probably is kind of similar to, yeah. to a clean as well by the time you're actually like getting into flexion and stuff. So yeah, I think it's probably, does it feel, I mean, the catch you said feels very similar though, the right? The catch, yeah, the catch is super similar. Like at the bottom where you do amortize, that's where you get the eccentric forces. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I think it's, I feel it when the double knee bend happens a lot in my knee. When it's really like in my heavy heavy weights and I'm pushing power output. Yeah. When I'm pushing P, <laughs> pushing power. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying I to think. Like. I'm trying to think of how that part of the lift feels. The only thing that's different from that part of the lift is the joint angle isn't as deep. What do you mean? In the double knee bend. When you're doing. Like it probably well, feels to do more a jump. Like, yeah, it probably feels more like my block foot, like the block foot pushing off is how the double knee bend. I don't get as deep feels. as you do in obviously cleans that's yeah. also a big part of it like you so, catch really deep relative to what i do so now so we've explained why you should do power cleans and our argument for it helping your jumping how do you increase it bro i love watching cleans too just the way your quads freaking pop out your calves get <laughs> loaded up man i'm just watching my lift here you guys can see this i'm just watching myself just freaking looking the way here we go just watching myself look like an absolute freaking unit. Oh, I love it. <laughs> love, what a great lift. Um, so wait, what was your next? What was your next? How point? do you how do you increase it? How do you increase your clean? Yeah. Oh, that's just some Oli lifting science. So if you're an Oli lifter, I mean, what they do is a little bit different. Like when I worked with Vance, he did some interesting stuff. Like he would do a lot of a lot of different stuff. He would really start with super high volumes of movements early early in the year. So like I think that they would around the spring yeah because taylor just did shout out taylor turner uh and vance newgard they mentored me a lot well vance specifically but taylor still works with him just kind of his top dog uh and i think he coaches at bruton parker is what it's called or something like that anyway so he taught me a bunch about the progressions and then also kind of how he does it and i saw a lot of it they track load volume i think a lot of the time so it'll be like how much weight you lifted by the like total like yeah. like so if you did like 100 pounds for 10 reps is a thousand for load volume yeah so he would track that for like all of his athletes and that mm -hmm. number when he was like building volume and stuff that number would skyrocket yeah. so he would do like 55 pounds for like sets of 15 5 by 15 on back squat a lot of the time you know he would he would use load volume and he'd follow the same principle so volume would go high to low um you know that that number would go from higher numbers to lower numbers yeah and obviously you're going to see massive jumps because if you take a set out, you're going to lose a thousand on one single exercise. And if you're just doing bench press or something, that's an easy way to get it to go up. So he would use that a lot. Um, and then he also would do, uh, you should just go to Chick-fil-A, bro. Just go to the Chick-fil-A. Yeah, I'm about to. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> um, he used that number a lot. He also used uh, generally the scheme where your heavy, heavy lifts are like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then your general days were those Tuesday, Thursdays pretty sure that's what he would do so similar to what we do yeah but he would like squat heavy i think like back squats would be on monday and he would pair that with like heavy snatch or no heavy clean you pair that with heavy clean and then he would pair like heavy snatch with heavy front squat so that you're able to like balance those things which makes sense right kind of like balancing qualities and then he would do like i think split jerk on either accessory days or fridays and then maybe some like accessory work, maybe one of the other squats. And then he would do a lot of like complexes and stuff, pulls and stuff like that on Tuesday, Thursdays, or he would do that after uh, like as accessory work kind of. Yeah. But usually they'd pick like two big lifts on Monday, Wednesday, Friday and pair them. So I think, I'm pretty sure it was like either full clean and jerk or like really heavy full cleans and shit. And then this would be like during specific cycles. Um, I don't know, that, I guess I'm getting too far into the weeds. How we do it, is a little bit different. Um, typically what I like to do for guys to get their power clean up is really boost up their pulls, their ability to pull. So clean pull, panda pull, high pull, um, 
what else what other thing pools that we do at super maximum weights of their power clean yeah that's how i typically get the pool better and then i'll start with a, usually density with the cleans like power cleans and stuff not i don't do full cleans usually with my my jumping athletes because they are not very proficient at them and they don't really need to do it and i'll usually load their squat you know either front or back squat so i like to unload their legs in the oldies and just focus on power that being the main emphasis of it you're going to get higher power outputs uh, from those guys in power clean and power snatch so typically i'll do those like two to three times a week and then i'll start with lower percentages earlier in the year and then later in the year uh you know i'll I, actually i won't even do sometimes i won't even put power clean or power snatch early in the year it'll just be pulls because yeah. it's more strength emphasis and strength speed and then i'll trend towards the power movements so power clean, power snatch, like further into the year when I want guys to be more specific. Um, and that's usually where their numbers will go up in those lifts, like that second or third mesocycle of a six, ma six uh, month macro cycle. Halfway through, they're usually peaking absolute numbers. And then what I like to do is get them really good in more specific movements, which is gonna be pulling from, uh, well, for Isaiah, I always keep at least one power clean day and at least once a week. But other athletes, I'll put hang movements in. Um, I'll pull from blocks to try to see higher velocities and higher power outputs because, again, you're going to get specificity to jump up by doing that. Uh, pauses. Know, pauses. Pauses. I'll put too. pauses in as well. Pauses I like to use for, for general work. That's usually early in the year. But I'll also do counter movement reps. So I'll tell Isaiah, you know, I want you to drop the bar from a high height, catch it, and basically try to change direction really quickly. And usually that's really, really good for uh, getting guys eccentrically stronger, right? So if Isaiah is at the top of a rack or, you know, rack position, I say drop down and then get out, catch it and get out of the bar, out of that position again, or a counter movement clean where they're kind of like standing up tall and then they drop down into it and then change direction really quickly. I've done it with high pulls with Isaiah where I'll say, you know, do a high pull. And then as soon as the bar gets down to mid thigh, turn it around and, and jump out of that position. I've done that with him before. Um, the, that stuff's very specific. I usually pair that with like fast eccentric loading uh, later in the year. So when we're at the tail ends of the um, force velocity curve, you know, on on uh, on the curves, right? You, you now now can see the tail ends where you're. Holy cow! Holy guacamole! <laughs> you're on the, road. Yeah, you're on the tail ends of that curve, and you know that's where you want specificity to be the highest. So. Uh, if you only cared about just getting your clean as high as possible, what I've typically seen happen is just basically daily max twice a week. That works super well when you suck, just daily max. It worked for Nathan, it worked for me. Doesn't really work super well for you now because you're so well trained that you don't have the luxury of backing off of heavy weights. Yeah, so like, I feel like the most beneficial stuff for me at this point are like heavy pulls off the ground and then lots of volume at sub-maximal weights. Lots of volume at sub maximum weights, yeah, you said? Yeah, with like high RPE. Like if I'm doing like doubles and triples, uh, and it's like RPE 9, and I'm getting a lot of volume there, I usually tend to see my power clean climb up. The thing too for you is like you have to be doing those heavy pulls followed up by heavy power cleans. Yeah. Like if you, and you can't do them the same way, same day. That's a big mistake. I think when guys try to go heavy pulls and then connect the dots to heavy power cleans, it never works. Yeah. It it's really almost different. like, it's almost like in high jump when guys try to jump off a box and then they take the box away, it's like, it does not transfer. <laughs> like mm -hmm. you want to try to keep it compartmentalized and not do too much in one day. Like let the athlete kind of figure out what they need to work on, what they want to focus on on that given day. And then the next session, focus on something else if, if you want to. Uh, that's that's what I've seen. Yeah. I mean, what, any, anything else you want to add to that? I think that's pretty good there, man. Do your Olympic lifts. Yeah. They're worth doing. We didn't even really I get guess to how catch, do you, but... How would you go about learning them, too? Oh, good question. yeah. This is how would you learn Olies? I yeah. think the best way to do it is just grab an empty barbell or something with, like, 10-pound training plates, that like, bumper plates. Make sure you have the right height off the floor. I think that's a big, big error a lot of people don't make. Is, that, is he wearing face mask? I've oh. seen a lot of THP nut. That's, uh, I thought he had <laughs> paint. I thought he had face paint on. That's a, that's a big mistake I see athletes making, especially if they don't have bumper plates. Is they'll like pull with ten pound. It'll be like five. Plates, like it'll be like fives, plates. and they'll go from the floor. Like, no, that like, fucks up. Start from everything. mid shin. Yeah, start, from, start mid -shin. from mid shin if you don't have if you don't have. Put uh, the bar on something. Plates. Put it on a rack. Stack up boxes. Stack up plates. Yeah. Don't so start would, from the floor. So the progression I like to do for learning them is I'll teach the first pull, 
and then with a, with pauses uh, typically I'll add in the second pull which is a jump so I'll say look take the bar from the floor pull it up to above the knee make sure the positioning is perfect pause there put the bar back down and repeat that process master the first pull off the floor then the next thing I'll say is okay go to the end of the first pull and pause and then jump uh, so then you know they'll do that and then they'll jump and then, now they've developed the double knee bend and that's yeah. really really important that's what Isaiah and I were talking about where the knees kind of sweep under the bar it's what makes it so different than a deadlift um, and then what I'll do is I'll say okay let me teach you a front squat so now they have the front rack position they know how to catch the bar then the next thing I'll do is I'll teach them how to transfer basically the jump to the catch so I'll, I'll keep it simple at first and I'll say jump into a front squat if that's not happening and this is usually the toughest part for people is learning how to get the bar from the jump to the catch. I'll say, take an empty barbell, and I just want you to do an upright row, keep the bar as close as possible into a front squat, keep the bars on the fingertip. I've coached this through so many different power clean tutorials. People that generally struggle with that part is because they lack shoulder mobility or wrist mobility, uh, in which case you just gotta rep that out with a barbell, like empty barbell. It's basically dynamic flexibility. You know, you're just doing the movement over yeah. and over and over again. Uh, you could do a hundred reps with the bar a day and it's not really going to fatigue you that much. It's just low grade, very low intensity fitness work. Um, I recommend guys do that as like a set of 30 or 50, you know, five sets of 10 to warm up. You can do that every day. You can do that with snatch. You do it with an overhead squat. You can do it with front squat. You can do it with back squat. And the bar is not going to be enough weight where it's going to fatigue you. Even if you had 40 pounds on the bar, or 45 kilo or 40 kilos 80 85 pounds that's almost no weight yeah uh so i would just say do a ton a ton of reps this guy's eyeing up your hell kids you bro <laughs> um yeah that's how I'll reps go. man reps with empty barbells like i way too often i see people with ugly technique trying to max like master just the bar if you can't if it doesn't look good with the bar it's not gonna look good <laughs> when you're loading it up with weight. So, and then if especially you, if you're a THP athlete, master it with light weights and send us the videos too. Yeah. Are you trying with, with And if it's bar. okay at lighter weights and then, you know, you get to a max and your form goes to shit, uh, you can work off of that number, but I wouldn't max until you can almost rep that with good form in the training, right? So you, like, for example, we had an athlete who was struggling. His technique was okay until he got to a max and then went to shit. Like, first off, just drop the bar. Don't try to lift the weight at the cost of your body because you're trying to get it like you know especially wrists and stuff uh you know keep your hand open that's a huge mistake i see people make they try to hold on to the bar i try to coach austin yeah. out of it all the time i think and let it hit you let the bar hit you in the shoulders you know and if you're scared of it you know uh clotheslining you then put a towel around the bar and uh try not to fall over when it hits you in the shoulders and the neck <laughs> keep your hand open that's a big mistake don't hold on to the bar Anything else? Big mistakes? It's, you know what's crazy? I never realized this, but getting good at catching heavy power cleans helps you so much with being physical in sports. Oh, yeah, all the time. Like, I'm thinking, like, a power clean is literally, like, a contact sport. It's like getting punched. Yeah, like you have, and you have to, and you just learn how to, like, take hits. Like, it's really similar to being on a basketball court and jumping in the air and someone kind of hits you, like... What's crazy? I'm used to a I'm used to a 315-pound bar moving at high velocities. You're nothing to me. Hammering me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and you still get fouled into fucking oblivion yeah. by those three hundred fifteen pound guys. It was just so like, is it, last week. My weaknesses, is, my weak, my weaknesses in the basketball court is six, eight, three hundred pound dudes. Yeah, they're impossible to move around. <laughs> Bigger than Jokic, yeah. way more than Jokic, and they just body you. But, all right, I think that suffices. I feel like we covered that pretty thoroughly. Mm -hmm. So if you guys have questions, make sure you leave it in the comment section below. Like the video if you're watching on youtube and subscribe to his channel you can go to my channel it is john evans 6265 and if you're listening on a streaming platform give us five stars leave a comment if you can subscribe if that gives you the option i think that spotify lets you do that and um yeah i guess we'll catch you guys next time go to teamboothgang.com if you want the best training in the entire world see you guys oh. <laughs>